And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Cloud Age. Cloud Age got a lot of buzz when it was first announced because A, it has a really cool cover, but B, one of the two designers is Alexander Pfister. Now, the other designer, Arno Steinwender, is a newer designer, at least one I don't know as much about, but, I, but um, Alexander Pfister, a lot of people know who he is because he's done many, many popular games from Great Western Trail to Maracaibo etc. So that brought everyone in. Now this is a somewhat lighter game than those, although I would hesitate to, hesitate to call this a light game. But in this game you are a commander of a sky ship, captain of tomorrow, as you fly across the barren wastelands and you're trying to bring life back to them and also save cities from these enemies who are attacking them. Now, don't give this is not a war game or anything like that. There's more to it than that. Collecting resources, upgrading your ship, fighting off pirates, all in a... There can even be a little bit of a campaign in this game. Let's take a cursory look at how the game works. In this game, you're going to play a scenario, although scenario one is almost like an introductory how to play the game. So you play scenario one, two, or three, which have some slightly different rules and different cards that go into a deck. Or you can play through a storyline through multiple chapters, which will have different cards and different things and a little bit of a storyline and things that will happen throughout the course of the game. Each player is going to have their own airship. And so this shows your airship at the beginning of the game. You're going to keep track of one of your resources energy here. And you can have up to 10 energy over the course of the game. There's this also at the bottom shows you the course of a round. Here you have your movement. If you build these, they cost a certain amount of iron. You'll be able to build more propellers that will increase your movement. You'll be able to build guns that give you more strength. And you'll be able to build more of these at the beginning, which allow you to get more tiles to make the land green once again. These cubes will be coming off your board. They keep track of rounds. Sometimes you'll get bonuses on rounds. And sometimes there's a book here, which essentially means something will happen based on the scenario or chapter you're playing. You're playing a game there, you have airships, and you're basically traveling all the way across a board. So the first thing players are going to do on their turn is they're going to take a deck of cards that they have. And each player has the same deck, which will be shuffled together, and you're going to draw two cards from this deck. The smaller number you are going to get by drawing project cards, another deck of cards, or you can take energy. And then the larger number is going to be your base for moving your airship across the board. When moving your airship, you'll move that number. So let's say in my case it was a two. I can move one, two. You can move through other airships, but not end your turn in the same one. And as you move across some things, so these cost two movement, for example, but they also give this one lets me draw two project cards. This one gives me two iron. But it doesn't really matter at the end of my turn, I need to end in a city. These cloud areas with attack symbols and rewards on them are cities. Now each person has solar panels they can use to get an extra movement, but if you don't use it for the extra movement, you get two free energy and propellers can add to energy and possibly other cards also. After that, you are then going to determine if you're going to, well, you're going to attack the town that you're in. So you start with your base weaponry, which might be nothing, but as you get guns, you might have one, two, or three attack, but you can draw cards from your deck. The first one is going to cost one energy, but you can keep drawing cards after that from your deck to increase your energy. And if you can ex meet or exceed the strength on the different spots, then you'll get the reward below. So you'll see at the bottom, there's water, but as time goes by, they become victory points. And you can get a lot, if especially you get to the end. The big cities can have great rewards. After that, everyone's going to take a turn in their cities. And that's where this board comes into play. 
They each player has a drone, and when you your turn, you're going to pick something that you can do. Now, one of the very base things you can do is you can build two projects, and everyone else can build one. Now, when you build, you can pay resources to upgrade parts on your ship. Or you can build project cards. Everyone's going to start with a hand of project cards, and you'll get more as the game goes by. Project cards have a cost which is always another project card. So if I wanted to build this one, I need to pay five water and another card. But now I have another thing on my turn where I get another movement or two energy. If I build this EMP blaster, I get plus one when attacking. And there are lots and lots of different cards in this game. Like I said, some of them are at it, like this parrot in different chapters and scenarios and can give you special abilities and the cards are color coded so you know when the abilities happen. Some cards give you an immediate ability like this one here for example lets me draw two tiles and gives me 10 points but many of the cards are also worth points at the end of the game. Some cards let you move your token on this gear board. This is where you keep track of score, by the way. At the beginning of each round, you can pay the energy based on where you are and get the reward at the bottom. So if I was here, I could pay three energy and take two points and five water. So this is a way to convert energy. And so you want to move as far down this track as you can. And so that's, and when you pass certain lines in the track, you'll get some rewards, cards or water. And again, this is also where players will be keeping track of their score throughout the game. Players can also, if they have greenery tiles, have the option to put them out, to plant them. So you go here, if you go there, the other players get to build something. But as you've been collecting these tiles from a bag, some you'll plant on the board, which turn into two victory points, which players can also move over and get those victory points. And others will just give you some resources as you build these. Like this one here, for example, gives me one medal and then lets me build something. But the other thing you can do, and this will happen quite a bit, is go to one of the cities. You'll pick the city you want to and you'll pick one of the four resources. Water, iron, energy, or project cards. You can look at the card here that's in this sleeve. These sleeves have clouds on them. And you're going to try to gauge what you're going to get. By that I mean, let's say I want water, so I might put my token here on the water, but you don't see a lot of water here. Now, this whole area behind the clouds might be water, but I do see a lot of the solar panels there, so maybe I'll pick energy. Yellow, everyone's going to get to pick something, each player, so yellow picks metal, and blue picks water. We then reveal the card, and so there was a lot of energy, so I get two energy. There's one water for that player and one metal. If someone had picked project cards, they would have gotten three. Not only that, if you had picked project cards, you would have also, you get the free build. And if you picked the energy, which I did, you get to discard a card from your deck to cull a card out of your deck. I'll get rid of that zero first and then maybe other low numbers. So you can't always see, like I see the build one here is on the spot for getting cards, but you can't always see depending on the cloud configuration. Not only that, everyone gets something, but the person who took the action will get the card. You'll add the card to your deck. The cards are here are going to be two threes, and there's some fours too, which are much better than what the cards you start with. If you take a two, you also get some of the greenery tiles, and if you take a three, you get one greenery tile. So they're all good to have, and they make your deck better, plus they give everybody resources. So each player is going to pick one of these things. Double build, take a card or put out the greenery tiles. Once everyone's done with that, you start the next round. At the end of the game, when each person will put a cube in the city that they land in, because you can only attack each city once, at the end of the game, you'll go to final things where everyone gets a few final builds and things, and then you're going to add together your end game points off the different cards you've built, and off the different things that upgrades you've built on your ship, are going to give you victory points at the end of the game, and whoever has the most is the winner. So the components here are fine. We got water, we got metal. There's also fives of each, but I don't know if I like them as much, but you're going to need them. The board itself has a very drab, deserty feel, but that is in theming with the game. There are double sides here, so you can pick which one you're going to go on, especially if you're just playing the scenarios. I am highly in love with these cloud cards because they show different clouds on each side and there's more than just three sleeves there's six different sleeves with 
So you have 12 different sides. You're only going to use three of those per game. So if the, for example, this card here, I can see maybe some, I can see the build coming out the side there on that card. But if it was in another cloud, I might not be able to see it. Well, I still can see it on this one, but you know what I mean. Some things will be visible depending on the cloud configuration. That's really cool, and that's going to draw a lot of people into the game. Now, I don't like this board here for scoring. Moving this hex around the outside is very fiddly, and it's very easy for it to move and come off, especially since you're moving tokens here. I do like the airships. They're nice, chunky pieces, and I'm always a big fan of having a board like this where you'll be upgrading it. And on that note, I really like that the project cards themselves are color coded so you can stick them at the bottom. So if, for example, I get a card that gives me an extra movement, I can put that here underneath my blue section to remind me when I'm doing the movement phase what happens. Also, the bottom of your board telling you exactly what to do on the course of round, great. Yes, there's symbology, but it's very easy, and I think the whole thing fits together well. So my only problem with components is the storage board, and also, uh, well, I'll talk about my other problem with the components in my final thoughts. Now, when we look on this, the theme, I think, comes out pretty strongly here as you're flying your airship and doing things and upgrading it. All that makes sense. Parts of this game I've seen before. The card play is very similar to Alexander Pfister's last game, Maracaibo. And there is parts of that that are just dripping with juicy decisions. Do I want to build cards or just give me points and move me farther on that gear track of my bobber? Or do I want to build more weapons so I can go around and fight cities? Or do I want high speed so I can fly around pretty fast, flying over all these different resources which give me things to do? Now, all this to say, I'm not particularly sure the game is going to offer dozens and dozens of options. There seems to be a few strategies you can follow. But it is really interesting to decide what you're going to do each round of the game. So I really like that. And folks, I'm just gushing over that cloud card system. I, I like it. Now, at its heart, I guess one of the mechanisms of Cloud Age is deck building. Deck building is a big thing these days. You have some small car, a deck of cards, and in this one, you're trying to get rid of the smaller numbers so you can get higher ones, which allow you to fly faster and or get more resources. So you'll pick a spot maybe with a higher number card to put in your deck. But if you like or dislike deck building games, this is a minor, minor part of this. It is not that big of a deal. I played one game against someone who was really good at deck building games and they focused on just the deck building part of this and I whooped them because I did something else. So that's not the be all end all of this game, but it still offers an interesting choice. And that cloud just, now you could obviously play with someone who took it to the nth degree, who took it up, moved the card around, looked at it for a while, tried to gauge, or even worse, someone who could memorize every single card in the game, although there's so many, I don't know how you could do that. But at face value, it's a great mechanism. You look there and go, I see only a little bit of water. So there must not be much water. But what if that free build is there? Free build's a big deal. Ah, which one do I, and I really need water anyway. So is that the one I'm gonna pick? Great choices. Every choice feels agonizing because even if I was like, I wanna build two things. Yeah, but I let everyone else build one. Ah, I want you to pick build two things because I only wanna build one. So I like that. And that's all good. And then the planning the greenery tiles offers another whole strategic arm to the game. Here's my other problem with the components of this game, and that's with the rules themselves. So when you play the rules and you open up the rule book, here you have chapter one, scenario one set up. And then you have chapter two and scenario two set up, or is it scenario three maybe, that you come into. And I don't like that. I get that some people want to play through multiple chapters, although I would argue the changes in the chapters here are very minuscule. There's a little bit of story, minuscule changes, a few extra cards go into the deck for each chapter. You might want to play through that. That is a staple of Fister's games. He did it in Maracaibo, he did it in Oh My Goods and things like that. But I just want to play the game. You know, if you took his most famous game, Great Western Trail, and made people play through a series of chapters, I'm not sure everybody wants to do that. I don't want to do that with Cloud Age. I just want to play a game of Cloud Age. 
which is scenario two or scenario three. And I thought that the rules and everything, I mean, I have a whole bag of tiles here and cards, and this is extra stuff that you'll put out depending on the scenario and chapter. And again, I think that's kind of neat, except I don't think these differentiate themselves that much. I don't think that the, you put them out there like, whoa, this game's so different than the last one. All this does is add extra stuff at the expense of making the game harder. I would have preferred they say, here's how to play Cloud Age. Here's another rule book that talks about going through the scenarios and going through all that. To me, that would have been an easier way to jump into it. But I still enjoy the game. It is a lot of fun. I like all the different options I have. I like the fact that it feels like a race, but isn't quite one. In fact, you could go very slowly, stay in the lower cities, but build up your airship and get points that way. Hmm. Good choices, good fun. Definitely check it out. That's Cloud Age. I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. Dice Tower Judgment approved.